Hello, welcome to Orphan Espresso. I'm Doug. I'm Barb. And this is the second in our travel coffee gear series. Uh, first, we featured the Pico pouring pitcher. Uh, this, I'd like to show you our flat pack travel coffee drippers. We have two models. We have the Classic and we have the Ultralight. The Classic comes in this lovely gift box. Ultralight, a bit more utilitarian. Okay. The difference between these two models is one is weight, of course, but that is achieved through the materials of the disc, the platform that sits on your cup or, or carafe. Okay. The Classic uses titanium and very, very nice material because it's quite strong, it's quite flat, and it's a natural finish. There's no coatings here. And uh, uh, frankly, if you do scratch this, you can come back on it with a scratchy pad. It goes right back to the same finish. It's a wonderful material. This is a titanium disc. The ultralight uses a carbon fiber disc. The carbon fiber, of course, once again, very strong, very flat. The idea here is that we don't want to ever have to break the disc, replace the disc, crack the disc. They don't warp. They don't give you any problems. So these are once again buy at once products. Okay. So here we have our two Tyvek travel bag. Room for filters down in the front. Okay. Filters here, rest of your equipment here, whatever else you want to put in. Passport, driver's license. Money. Money, you know, whatever. But those are the two different models. And the silicone piece that forms the disc has two different sides. One side has long ribs, and one side has partial ribs or short ribs. Makes me kind of hungry for ribs when I'm thinking about it. That's not good. But the the essence here is that you have to, you have two different drippers. Now you roll it. I'm rolling it with the long glasses with the long ribs on the inside. This approximates the Hario V60 style, which is a faster dripper. Now, these little buttons can be a little bit tricky to button. Once you get them on, you push the disc on into the, into the slot, and there it is. It's quite sturdy and strong once you get it put together. Now, there's a reason for these little buttons. And I made that Hario, so I'll make this Kono, which is a little more difficult to do. Now, we didn't make these like big OXO, clumsy finger, arthritic, good grip kind of buttons. Which would have been helpful for us. It would have been helpful, but I only have to put it together once. And sometimes I'll get a couple of buttons buttoned and then push the disc on and then finish it. Push on the disc so it snaps into that little groove. Then I'll go back in here. See, I'm doing that, pushing my buttons on. This has to do with manufacturing first. Uh, and that to make a big button, a big mushroom, it, it requires a different tool. These small buttons can come right out of a com flat compression tool that you make the silicone piece in. It's like a waffle iron. Okay, it just peels right off. And the second is, if we do that, we lose this two-sided function. It doesn't, if we have these big buttons stick up, it interferes with the, the, the function of the Kono style. So there were some, some reasons for that, but as you saw, I managed it. You know, I got them all buttoned up and they're ready to go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate uh, some pours with these. I've used our pouring pitcher. Uh, when we travel, this is my basic carafe when I travel. Inside of here, I generally put my bag of beans, socks, whatever else I'm going to put in, but I just use this chintzy measuring cup for a carafe when we travel. But I'm going to show you using these two. Now, um, I have to make sure I have my Kono style here, and I have my Hario style here. Now, Okay, now I have pre-ground coffee, 
which I know it's a sin, but I, I could I could have hand ground this coffee for you right here and on this. But watching a person hand grind coffee is something you might have seen in a video, and it's a little bit tedious. And okay, I have to check now. One is Kono, and one is one's Kono, and one is that. Okay, Kono takes a coarser grind. This is the Kono. Okay, insert my paper. Push Make it all sure away. the paper goes all the way down in the bottom. Paper goes all the way down into the bottom. You know I've never done this on a video. I've never brewed coffee. That's true. And, and part of the reason is, yeah, I've made plenty of espresso, but part of the reason is, is that I, I'm not a brewing professional. And uh, I'm not a get the paper apart professional either. In, in, we had a cold snap here, and, yeah, it, and it got a little cold in this thing, and my, my fingers are a little cold. Okay, so there's my Hario, there's my Kono. I have to keep track. Now, which was which? This is Kono. Use a slightly coarser grind than the Hario. Now, I'm going to do these one at a time. I'm not going to try to do them both at the same time. Okay. You can see slight, slightly coarser. Okay. Now, these filters that we're using, they're Abaca fiber filters. And they're really nice. It's a relative of the bamboo plant. And usually they don't need any, any, any washing. I can't taste any residual flavor behind them. And since I forgot to pre-rinse them, I'm just kind of winging it. If you do pre-rinse, you would have already done that, okay? But using the Abaca filters, what, these what's are the, made in Japan. What's the name of the brand? Cafec. Cafec. C A F E C. Cafec. Yeah, that's the filters I like. Okay, I've got a mark inside of here. Okay, I, 18 grams of coffee, by the way. I've got a mark. That's 300 grams of water. Okay. Made with a Sharpie. Made with a Sharpie. I've got my vessel over here. God, I waste a ton. Another thing is I, I never really brewed coffee sitting. I guess I have. Okay. Now, of course, I didn't set my gate. Yes, it is set, thankfully, for Kono. Now, I've got my 300 grams. Hold it in my light, you know, my fingertips. Let me move this so my, my wing is not right there, okay? So, just like many coffee methods, first I'll do about a 50 gram, 50 milliliter bloom. Now, I'm on the smallest opening that on this flow control gate. I'm on the number three. And... Once again, when we travel, I don't take a scale. And the control that I get on this little stream is that I can actually do that amazing Japanese slow style. That requires an extremely fine grind and a lot of precision. The first person that ever demonstrated pour over coffee to us is Casey. Yeah. Casey Klein said he was in Topeka at the time. Is he still there? No. And um, he emphasized that we wanted the coffee to exit at about the same speed as you added the water. Now, I have reached the point where the liquid is up above those, the, the ribs inside. And the filter is pretty much sealed against the sides. So... I can just keep coming in, and another, I, I once saw a Stumptown video, you know, sink the dark spots, sink the dark spots. I thought that was pretty good advice for a person who just wants to make a good cup of coffee, not, not create art. A good cup of coffee is... Is art. I, I, on this one, you see, I, I'm keeping the, the flow very, really close to the surface because I, I'm just kind of laying the water on the top and I'm letting the, the, the new water just travel through the coffee bed. 
Low agitation. Yeah, that's just... No, it's not the way everyone does it. Some people do pulse pours on a Kono. Um, but I find that this method, especially if you're traveling without a scale, it's quite repeatable. And I just keep coming on until I'm just going to pour out all 300 grams of water. And I usually just kind of finish off there in the center. I've, I've probably gotten a little fast because I'd, I'd really like to have that water disappear right at the last of my pour. But this does allow a really a low, low agitation. I'm not shooting for, for extremely high extraction yields. I just want a good, tasty travel cup of coffee to sit and watch the sunset or, or basically get up in the morning in a hotel room and have good coffee, have good coffee in bed. It's kind of what this entire travel system is all about. Okay, that's the Kono. As you see, you got a nice flat bed. Now, this is one of the things, I, I ground this coffee in our Apex grinder, and uh, it's, I just really love to see the way this looks. It is so clean, it's so nice, you know, especially with this, this method. Okay, that's my Kono brew. This is the one I'm most familiar with. This, this is, you know, what I do all the time. You know, I use a Kono, uh, I do the straight pour through, I don't have to use a scale. I have, as a matter of fact, for traveling and at home, I found this little scoop. And this holds six grams of coffee when it's eaten. So I don't really even need to pre-measure. I don't have to weigh my coffee beans either. I just, you know, three even, and that gives me 18 grams of coffee. Go to my line. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and try this V60 style, and I believe that this is James Hoffman's style. I could never do the, that, you know, the James Hoffman, I don't have the glasses, the hair, the accent, but, um, you're a little older than James. Uh, well, maybe. But I'm going to go and I'm going to change this to the largest hole. I'm going to change this to the five. So it, it's more like a standard gooseneck kettle. And hot water once again. You know, I, I think he does 30 grams of coffee and 450 grams of water or something. But in this small brewer, so... First, I'm going to come in. I'm going to give it a good bloom. As you can see, the coffee's quite a bit finer. It's going to have a slower drawdown. I might have ground it a little too fine, but. And I might not be able to pull the, the, the Hoffman off because what he does is he blooms and then he adds all the water to a, a fairly fine grind, okay? So I might have to end up doing a pulse pour on this. See, I'm adding the water fairly fast, fairly high agitation. If you want a really high agitation, you can pour yeah, from a much higher. Hold it up here, but it splatters a little. Okay, I'm going to end up with with pulsing it. I might have ground just a little too fine to get that. And since the, the, the coffee, the brewed coffee is coming out through the side ribs, had I used the same grind as I did with uh, the Kono style. Okay, but once again, no, no scale, no muss, no fuss. 
if you if you're familiar with the old Melita uh, uh, style, the Melita cones is that you you bloom and you fill the whole thing up to the top. That's basically what the Hoffman method is. Okay, but this allows the the, the full ribs allows faster movement out of the filter, and had I used the grind for my Kono, it would have been way too fast out of the filter. My drawdown would have been quite rapid. Okay, but I grown once again. I ground this on the Apex and at about a click number three or four, something like that, from fine. So as that draws down, I think I don't really have that much more to say. Uh, I'd like to see what this coffee bed looks like, just for fairness, um, and plus for my own information. But this is the flat pack. It does just what it does, is packs flat. Uh, we have the ultralight, and we have the classic. Uh, we also have you know, our, our vessels. This is a new fixie item, which is a, a lid that you can use if you're going to pre-grind or you're going to take your beans with you. You know, you can pop these in and you can take enough beans for a few brews. And that's looking a little slow, but I, it's probably going to be pretty good, actually. But once again, now we're getting down there. And you see it, Barb? Mm -hmm. That's why I love the Apex. There's no mud. That moment where the water just disappears. It's just so beautiful. Anyway, we've got a lot of coffee to drink. Thanks for, for watching. And this was the Orphan Espresso Flat Pack Classic and Ultralight Travel Coffee Brewers.